a six bludgeoned into oblivion. It's a six! A deaf steer down to third man, or a well-judged lead. It all comes down to the bat and the batter. But behind the scenes, an unsung hero forms the bat's guiding light, the handle. However, did you know that the handle is made separately from the rest of the bat? Why do you think that is? The modern-day monster bats originate from traditional unibody bats, carved from a single piece of wood. These bats had one fatal flaw, a short lifespan. Let us understand why. In order to grip the bat, the handle by design is thinner than the blade. Upon impact, there is a twisting force on the bat, increasing proportionally with distance between the pivot and the load, causing a magnified force on the handle. If the bat was to be unibody, its rigid handle would not only cause a jarring effect on the hands, but struggle to withstand the impact and eventually snap. The ideal handle must be more pliant and forgiving. In contrast with the ideal blade, hard, unyielding. There was one obvious solution. The handle and the blade had to be made separately. And along came the contemporary cane handle. A piece of cane is split into four, rubber sheets are inserted between them, and the handle is cut into a wedge shape and inserted into the blade. Now, when the ball hits the bat, the impact on the handle is cushioned by the more pliant cane, aided by the rubber inserts aligned perpendicular to the line of the ball, which further absorb the shot reducing the momentum over a period of time and minimizing the impact on the handle as per Newton's second law of motion, just like a hammer, which uses shock-absorbing hickory in its handle to shield the wielder's hand from the shock. And after a twine reinforcement and a rubber grip, the batter can put their faith in the handle to execute controlled maneuvers and disdainful bludgeoning in equal measure. What do commentators mean by using the long handle? Comment below and stay tuned to Wicked to Wicked.